fine as hell, thick as fuck, oh my god, that's my baby, Caroline. Hello everyone, welcome, welcome back to my channel, it's your girl Caroline, that's me, and welcome to another start to finish, detailed as ever, wig install, little video where I show you how to go from... And like I was saying, the video where I teach you how to go from straight out of the back to straight out of the scalp. You feel me? Yes. So today's video, we're going to be working with a new company. I've never worked with it before. This is June Oda Hair Company, June Oda. And I just got the wig right out of the box. And for my first time working with them, they, they, they came to impress. Like, y'all, they gave me a whole little curling wand. Might or might not use this. We'll see. But let's get into the hair because that's what y'all really care for. So we've got us a Tis the season to be red ginger. It's the time. And it's a closure. I wanted something very easy and it is a body wave wig. And this is their highest density. That's why it's so full. This is 210% density. 26 inches of body wave. Ooh. Whenever people like do a little um, wig unboxings and they show the hair in the beginning, I always, honestly, personally, I don't be caring too much for that part because I feel like, duh, the hair gonna look good out of the pack. You can't tell the hair till you've like, washed it, worn it. So they're like, ooh, y'all, look. Look at it. That doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean anything to me. Okay, so currently it's 9 p.m. I wanna finish all of them, leaving myself six hours. That's me being very generous to myself, but let's see if I can finish this whole bleaching, plucking, and installing while filming in six hours. I'll keep LD on that part. So first thing first, here's a look at how the knots look. And my thing with red wigs, I've been always trying to figure out if I should should bleach the knots or not bleach them. Cause like, since like the knots themselves are not like dark, like with a regular 1B or black wig, it's not that noticeable. I guess it really depends on how big the knots on the wig are. Oh, and for my, for my beginners out there wondering, bleaching, what is the whole point of bleaching knots? What are knots? If you can see, right, you see down here, those little like, those little dots that you see in the spacing right here, those are the actual literal knots that are tied because they're hand tied onto the lace. And the whole purpose of bleaching it is to use bleaching powder to turn it from a dark color to make it lighter so it kind of like gives the illusion that like it's the knots are disappearing into your scalp that is why we bleach the knots you don't have to there's ways to get around it i have a video showing that how i like camouflage my knots whenever i don't feel like bleaching it but i like to bleach my knots because i feel like that extra stuff just really helps it look even more natural you know but okay let's get into the bleaching i'm gonna go ahead and just really fast forward through this whole bleaching process because in hindsight I don't think it really made a difference. I still have yet to find a really good routine to get my red knots to bleach to like a really, you know, noticeable, making a difference color because even after bleaching it, it kind of came out more orange. And mind you, I left it on the wig for about an hour. And yeah, the color was bleached, but like it was more of an orange color than really blonde. I've been looking around for a better tutorial or just a better way to do it. So I was like, I'm gonna cut this part out of the video because it didn't really make a difference. So if you have a red wig and you don't know if you want to dye the knot, bleach the knots or not, it's okay, honestly, just skip that part. You can use makeup to finesse it. Unless the knots are like really, really big and very noticeable, then I'll try your best to bleach it. And if you want to figure out how I bleach knots, I promise you I have lots of very detailed tutorials just like this one. Well, not just like this one, because I'm fast forwarding it, but I have detailed tutorials showing how to bleach the knots. I think I will probably use a stronger bleaching powder because this one it is strong and works well but i feel like it probably works best for dark hair probably not for lifting red um hair so yeah that's why i'm just gonna first fast forward through this part okay guys it's basically been a whole hour and you can see it's like lifted but it still has more of an orange tint and i'm not trying to start having my hair fall apart on me and then the whole video is paused so I'm just gonna go ahead, gonna go ahead and wash all of this out. 
So the next few clips is me just going ahead and washing the hair with some shampoo. And a lot of this is pertaining to the bleaching process because while the wig was very yellow, I did try to use like purple and blue shampoo to help cancel that out. But as well, that didn't make a really big difference to neutralize the color. But I did want to keep these clips in here because just regardless of bleaching the knots, I always find it important to wash your wigs. And I was kind of talking about that, while it, why it's important to wash your wigs, because y'all, we know this hair comes from China, Asia, wherever. I mean, Asia, China isn't Asia, but you get my gist, right? So it's, it just comes overseas. You should always wash your things clothes just for your own personal health reasons. So I like to use a moisturizing shampoo because shampoos can be dry and stripping. Um, I'll try to like link down below the shampoo that I use. So I'm just going in there and washing the hair out with some shampoo. After I do that, I went in with my moisturizing deep conditioner and I like to just let my hair sit in deep conditioner. Like my, I like to let my hair sit in deep condition, depending, sometimes 30 minutes if I have time, I'll do overnight, you know? But since I was kind of trying to like fast pace everything, I did this, I let it sit for 30 minutes. Just to kind of help soften the hair back up after you shampooed it. All right, now let's get into plucking. I feel like the hair in the knot is a little bit orange, but honestly, we will just have to use some makeup magic to fix that. So, mm, take what you will from that bleaching tutorial. Red colored wigs can be a little tricky. If you have some skills at plucking, I mean, at bleaching red colored wigs, definitely leave down some, definitely leave down, leave down some suggestions below. I'm over here using the tissue paper that came with the wig to place over my wig head. So that way the knots are just a whole lot more visible because you can, you know, it's a white, it gives me a white surface to pluck on. And then we're just gonna slide her on. Put it down with some tea pins. All right, since the hair already came parted in the middle, that's great because I always like to have the hair parted in the middle because knowing the middle helps me know to not pluck right in the center part, unless I'm trying to like, you know, thin and out, but for just the hairline, I don't do that. Now, here's my thing. I prefer to pluck my wig when it's dry because that way I can tell just exactly how full the hairline is. But since I'm trying to fast pace this, I don't have time to let it air dry. So I'm just gonna pluck it wet. There are pros to plucking your wig wet. If you pluck your wig wet, the knots come out easier sometimes, but sometimes they'll come out a little bit too easy, so be careful. And to pluck, I'm gonna be using these Revlon tweezers. These aren't my favorite tweezers because these are a little bit too pointy, so I'm gonna be really careful to not poke a hole. These are very sharp. My favorite ones, I can't find them anywhere in my house, so I'm just gonna have to do what we have to do. And what I've been doing recently is I've been trying, if the wig comes like a little bit slightly pre-plucked in the front like this, like you see how like it's a little bit thin up here, I've been not plucking at all in the front just to save myself lots of baby hairs. I feel like I've been plucking my front hairline too much and don't be having any baby hairs. Like before, I would still always start plucking in the back, but then after I'll pluck a little bit in the front. Now I don't even pluck at all in the front. Trying to get a nice tight grip. So really pull it tight, that adds tension. Make sure everything's pushed back so you can see it. And make sure the hairline's like pushed back flat and neatly. And then I start with the tweezer with a backwards pulling motion like that. And I just make my way down. So pluck, skip, pluck, skip, right? I pluck there, I skip right here. Can y'all see? I plucked right here, so now I'm skipping there, and now I'm gonna pluck in between that. Skip right there, and just work your way down the line, horizontally. And don't try to pluck in the same place. Like, you gotta do like random pulling out. And I always try to make sure I'm pulling the hair out from the root, like you pulling out the knots with it. Right, now I'm going in between there. Now I'm like taking the tweezers even further back into the hairline. So I was up here, right? Like I was down here, now I'm like higher up here. Oh. Plug skip, plug skip. 
creating little gap itches. But you don't want to create fat wide gaps. Just like very like hairline strokes. What helps me the most is like getting like someone like I really like how they pluck their wigs. I'll get like a Pinterest inspo photo of a plucked hairline and I'll try my best to mimic that. That's kind of what helped me figure out what I'm going for. Cause sometimes visually you're like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just doing whatever. So having like a visual to look at while you're doing it kind of helps you, at least if you're a visual person, see where you're, what you're going for. I'm just going further back into the hairline to thin it out. I hope I'm not poking holes because this tweezer is really sharp. So sometimes I'll like flip the tweezer the other direction and pluck this way. I'm doing like a back dragging, like I'm dragging back, not like a up, more like a back drag motion. And I'll do that sometimes to get more precise. I feel like that's good enough for Neil. Like I said, less is more. But I'll just be always trying to keep plucking because sometimes too, it's annoying when you put the wig on, you're like, damn, this thing still, this still looks very wiggy. That's good. That's thin enough out enough. We'll do more once I install the wig if I need to. And I just push the hair back to the front. And like I said, now, if the hairline is pre-plucked a little bit in the front, I just leave it like this and I'm gonna do the tweaking if I need to for thinning out the baby hairs later. But if your hairline is really thick and bulky in the front, then I would suggest going ahead and plucking the front just a little bit. Okay, so I did poke a little bit of a hole right there in the middle, like I guess, but it's okay. It happens to the best of us. So now I'm gonna try to do all of this. Like, I'm just trying to show y'all this because, look, like, your wig does not have to be perfect. Like, sometimes my wigs will come out perfect while I'm customizing. Sometimes I make little mistakes. You can always fix a little mistake. It's just about knowing when to stop but not make it worse. So, yeah. Now what I'm going to do, since the hair is wet, I'm just going to put it under my little bootleg Amazon hood dryer to let it dry. I'm gonna use this opportunity to mold the hairline out with some mousse. This just makes it like much easier to get a flat wig. I'm gonna go in with some mousse and flatten the hairline out. So that way, when I put under the dryer, it's gonna set. And just make sure you're brushing that product through to get it to actually make the wig flat. Okay, now I'm gonna go in and pluck the middle part a little bit because I want it to be a little bit wider. And that, I just try to like look at the grids because if you zoom into it, there's like grids. So I try to just follow one straight line of the grids going upwards. Like you really gotta like zoom in and look at the lace and follow the line. And you're really just pulling out one individual knot. So this takes also like really attention to detail to get it right. Okay, so 
here's how the hair is looking right out of the dryer. You see she's nice, flat, molded. The hair is basically dried. Damn. <laughs> wow, so I poked just a little bit more holes than I expected. So I'm gonna have to go in later <laughs> with my nylon thread, it's like invisible thread to fix that bigger hole, but it's okay, it happens, it happens. I'm just gonna have to be really careful not to get my hot comb on it before it like makes the hole rip. Now, first thing I wanna do is tint the lace with some concealer. This is the e.l.f. Hydrating Concealer in shade Deep Ch Chestnut. And just buff that in under the lace. This was really also is gonna help not make it so orangey in the knots. And I always say if the lace is like darker than your skin tone, use a foundation that's a little bit lighter so that way you're like you can lighten up the lace. But if it's like HD lace and it's exact skin tone or like transparent, then go ahead and use your exact shade. Cut off this lace back here in the back of the wig. Sometimes the closures, depending on how the wig fits on my head, I won't put the elastic band on. Cause sometimes it'll just not like fit perfectly, but let's see how it goes with this first. Secure that. No wig cap, no nothing. Just vibes out here. Ah. I only suggest you should really worry about doing like a bald cap if you're like doing like what's it called the glued method like actual glue because that's going to help make create a good barrier to protect your baby your your real hair from getting glue on it yeah look at that what is the good <laughs> i'm feeling this i'm feeling this See, now that I did all that prep, I already know it's all about to be real straightforward. Just to make sure I use like clips and combs and stuff to put the wig back, because it just helps you see what you're doing. I never know if my wig is right in the middle. Like, I don't know what the middle of my head is. I just hope for the best sometimes. So to lay down a lace, I like to use Ebon Lace Spray. If you don't know, now you know, this is a glueless spray. People say the black can, because it comes in different cans, which means like different strengths. People say the black can is really good and that it like has much longer hold. I've tried it personally, I don't like it. I feel like it doesn't, it's too much residue for my opinion. I, I like this one, this is like the middle hold. They have a sensitive version. I think that's the, the silver can, I believe. So if you have like reactions when you've tried this before, do try their silver alternative out. Next, I like to have a nice brow razor. I like having very fresh brow razors, so I have a lot. I got a pack of 60 for $10 on Amazon. They just type in face razor pack and they have like a lot. So this way I can, I only just use it like every two installs because like the fresher and sharper that blade is to cut your lace, the better off you are. And then as well, I like to, for cutting my lace for like extra corners where I can't use the brow, the brow razor, I have this little cuticle comb. When I say cuticle comb, I literally mean like your nail cuticle. I I just steal these from like my nail cuticle sets because I don't really, but you can get them from the beauty supply store as well if you just check like the nail art section. But I like these for the lace because it's very sharp and tiny so I can get like in the little corners. Now, I've been really into the whole like Widow's Peak hairline. So I'm gonna try to create a little Widow's Peak situation. And I just like part the hair out. Like I just like try to like create a little triangle with the hairline in the front. And I part out hair. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. It works a lot better if you do this on the mannequin head, but I forgot, so I'm just freeballing. But I kind of have like a little bit of a widow's peak parked up. And it works better if the hairs can pull out themselves because you want a clean cut off for it to not look funny but sometimes i just will use a razor like this and shave them off i just try to spray as close to the hairline as possible 
and I just use my fingers to tap the product in to spread it around evenly. Same thing on this side. And I try to spray more onto the lace than the actual hair, just to avoid getting the hair all built up with the spray. Then to really lock and glue it all down, you gotta go in with your blow dryer. And I use on a high heat, but medium power. So like, like that. And to cover up like the edge of the closure where it stops, I like to use, just like push the hair on this side downward to help cover that up. Okay. I like the Evan spray a lot better than Got To Be. If you're using Got To Be for your lace, once you start using this, you'd never go back to Got To Be. Like Got To Be is trash compared to this, I promise you. Cause this is already nice and dry and it feels like it's secure. And then just to cut the lace right in the center and we go in and I just kind of follow the diagonal, the line, the natural hairline curve. Okay, I'm gonna cut that off. I like to do one more like little security tap of it just to make sure any of the edges don't lift up because sometimes when you're cutting it it will lift yeah looking pretty good if i don't feel like the lace is thickened down i'll go ahead and put my elastic band on and let it sit some more but i feel like it's stuck so i'm gonna just go ahead and go in for the honestly do i need baby hairs though i like i look you kind of like it like this i've been really into like no baby hair hairstyles now we can get into the styling portion. And for styling, I'm gonna do crimps because I don't really do crimps often, so I feel like doing something different. Forward. So this is a crimper I got from Amazon, and it's from the brand Revlon. This crimper was twenty dollars, and I got it. I'm gonna put some of this heat protectant slash anti frizz spray in the hair. It's from the brand Avian. I got it from Sally's Beauty Supply Store. Actually, go in and trim the ends of the hair. It just makes the hair look healthier and thicker, in my opinion, when I trim the ends. Like, look at that. It's giving broomstick. Look, even when I would pay my own money for hair, I always trim my ends. Like, I'd always, like, overshoot by an inch, like an extra inch if I want a bob instead of getting an exactly 16 inch bob I would always put in my budget to get me an 18 inch wig and cut it to 16 inches because cutting the ends just makes the hair look a whole lot better I don't know but yeah so it's a nice blunt chop so now it's probably more of a 24 than the 26 inch I'm 5'3 I'm a shorty that's one thing I like about being short, at least I don't need too many inches to make hair look long on me. You short, but you tall girls, y'all got that long torso. The things I would do to have a long torso. Okay, now we can proceed to the crimping portion. I like this Andrew Schaefer um, hairspray. I saw someone on TikTok that says she sprays the hair sections with the spray before going in to really make the crimps nice and defined. So let's see if that works. I'm not going to use too much. And I just get the crimper. And I try to keep the hair as like straight as possible. And I just hold, ooh. Oh, I just hold it on for like five seconds. I was like five, four, three, two, one. And I just like slide it down. The hard, the closer and harder you keep the thing, the better the crimps are. Like the longer you keep it on there, 
to really press that like wave in there. I feel like the better it is. Slow crimp. Repeat just like that. fingers through it kind of wants to get big and now let's do the other side
Okay, so I decided I liked it without the baby hairs. I feel like the baby hairs were not making sense. Okay, it's cute. I like this. I'm going in a lighter shade concealer. And I like to just put that in the middle of the part. That just makes everything really like, you know, hot. Make sure you blend it out. Y'all know I was extremely brain dead because it was like, God forbid, not brain dead, but I was extremely just tired at this point. It was like 4 or 5 a.m. So I didn't even record a proper intro, but here we are at the end result. I did go ahead and rewand it, not rewand it, but recrimp it the next day because this way I like this version too with the no baby hairs. I feel like the curls are more messy. So it's like more like a messy beach wave kind of look. And then the next day, here's how it looks like with some baby hairs and crimped, but in a more neat way. I just went ahead and like kind of crimped it on the mannequin to give it a more neater look. But either way, I like both. Which one do y'all prefer? This baby hair, more neat crimped or the messy no baby hair look? Let me know down below. With that said, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And most importantly, happy Thanksgiving. I am grateful and thankful for each and every one of y'all. With that said, peace out, Girl Scouts, and goodbye.